Welcome back. In this video, let's look at some of the magic which Spring Boot developer tools brings in. So we have a lot of projects in here which we are developing for a lot of our courses and website. I mean, we have a complete website on Spring Boot called springbootutorial.com. And in this video, what we'll do is we'll use one of the applications that we developed. So we have a Rustar service applications with a lot of features in here. We also have the Spring Boot developer tools present inside our pom.xml. So this is where the Spring Boot Developer Tools is installed in. So Spring Boot Dev Tools, welcome to this step one, where we're going to import an existing project into our workspace. The project that we are going to use is something which we created for our course on Spring Boot uh, Tutorial for Beginners. This is a course on developing uh, simple REST services with Spring Boot. As you can see, it has great ratings as well as it's a course of about six hours in duration. I mean, 38 videos and it's an excellent course. You can look at the reviews as well. In this course, we developed a complete REST application step by step. What we'll do is we'll take the zip, we'll import it, and then we would use that to understand the concept at hand. How do I import that project in? Down below the video, which you are watching right now in the description, there'd be a link to the zip, which has the code for the project that we would want to import in. So just click that zip, download the zip into a folder and extract it to a folder. So if you are on Windows, probably you can extract that zip to C colon slash uh, some folder in there. And if you are on Mac, do the same thing. Just put it in some folder and then you can go ahead and import it using Eclipse. So file, import. So I've taken the zip, unzipped it to a folder and now I'm saying, file import existing Maven projects and I would want, I'm pasting in the folder path. So I'm pasting in the path where that particular folder is in. You can also browse to it as well. So you can do browse and select that folder. Once I do that, this would come in. So you would have a pom.xml which is coming in. Now I can go ahead and say finish. You'd see that the Eclipse would complete the import of the project and this project would come in. So this project, if you look at it, contains a lot of code. So there is a lot of Java files as well as resources, tests. Once the application has imported, fine. You should see a folder structure similar to what we are seeing in here. And also you should see a few or quite a few Maven dependencies come in as well. So you'd see that there would be a host of Maven dependencies which would be there. So that's a clear sign that you got everything working and you are ready to run the application. So how do you run the application? So it's main Java, go to com in 28 minutes Spring Boot, Spring applic student application. So it's a typical Java application. So all that you need to do is run as Java application. This specific application uses a embedded server. That basically means Tomcat is also built in into the application. All that you need to do is right click run as Java application and it would launch a the Tomcat server with our application deployed. For more details about this specific application, which we just launched up, you can visit our website, springboottutorial.com slash creating rest service with Spring Boot. This article is a long article actually taking you through the entire journey of creating the rest service that you are looking at right now. So if you are interested in more details, I would recommend you to look at the description and click the link there. So you should find a link with www.springbootutorial.com. Just click the link and you should be able to understand the details of how to invoke the REST services and things like that. If you're new to Spring or Spring MVC or Spring Boot or Eclipse or Maven or JUnit or Mockito, in the article, you should find references as well. These references are basically one hour video courses on all the popular frameworks. So, these are very popular videos with more than 100,000 views. So I'm sure you'll find them useful. Now that we have the application set up and also we can see that the server has started up, we are ready to get into step. What do Spring Boot DevTools really do? So I'm actually removing the Spring Boot DevTools from this application. And what I'll do is I'll launch the application up. Right click run as Java application. So basically what we are doing here is I remove the Spring Boot DevTools. I would want to give you a demo of what functionality Spring Boot DevTools brings in. So I'm starting the application. So you'd see that it would take a little while. So it would take about 25, 30 seconds, I think, to start up. So if you look at it, it took about 15 seconds to start up. So that's the time which took to start up the whole thing. And let's say now 
I'm making a change in the application. So I want to configure a different value in the application dot properties. Let's say um, instead of the name in 28 minutes, I'll say in 28 minutes new. I want this change to be picked up by the application or you might be changing something in your Java file as well. So student application dot Java. Uh, let's say I'm, I don't want to do a sys out. Let's just assume, let's say. So if you look at the application change, it's not being picked up right now. The application is not reloading and picking up the change that we did. The only option would be in that case, stop the server, then run the application again. That's the only way to pick up the change. It involves a lot of manual process, right? So I would lose at least 30 seconds. And if I'm developing an application, I might do this quite frequently. So I'll lose a lot of time. What Spring Boot Developer Tools does is now I'm adding back the Spring Boot Developer dependencies. So I'm adding Spring Boot Dev Tools. That's basically the dependency. I'm adding it in. Let's launch the application again. So now I'm adding in the Spring Boot Developer Tools in and run as Java application. The initial start of the application would still be the same. You'd see that it would take about 15 seconds. It took about 13 and a half seconds to start up. But the most important thing, now I'll remove the things in the log, in the console. So I'm going to uh, go to the spring context and remove the sysout.context. So you'd see now that the application is reloading it up, picking it up again. And you can see that it's now started in five seconds. So in sh as soon as I make the change, the application is picked up, the change is picked up, and it's reloading in five seconds. This is because um, Spring, Boot is Spring Boot Developer Tools is intelligent. So basically, when you load the, uh, like when you load the, I mean, when you write an application, jars are not something which would change often. So those things are not reloaded again. The only things which should be reloaded is the real code that we write inside the application. So it starts up very quickly. So whenever I make a change, I can see it live very, very fast. So we did a sysout on context, right? So let's see if that sysout is in here. So if you are looking at the last line of this thing, is actually the embedded web application context, which is getting printed. That's the CTX being printed. So that's the change that we did, which is being picked up right now. So just below started student application, this line is there. Now I'll actually comment that out to just see if it's being picked up very fast or not. So I'm saving it again. So you'd see that the application gets reloaded again. And now you'd see that there is nothing below it. So started student application is the last line. There is nothing below it. So this context is not getting printed. So that's basically what would happen. So as soon as I make a change, this change is live as well. One of the other important features in Spring Boot Developer Tools is something called Live Reload. If you go to the website livereload.com and you download a plugin for your browser, so Safari or something, then what would happen is if I load something in the page, it gets automatically refreshed when the uh, application is changed. So let's say a service is running some data, then the browser would automatically refresh and show the new data. So that's what is possible with Live Reload. Unfortunately, I don't have it set up here, so I'm not able to demo it, but that's also another cool feature. So Spring Boot Developer Tools basically brings in the feature of loading the changes as soon as you make them. So instead of restart, stopping, starting the application again, the changes are directly loaded. So thereby you are very productive. So the developer can be really, really productive when he is using the Spring Boot developer. At in 28 minutes, our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos, and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you'd love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web application, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present, which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website 
www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best use of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video or the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28 Minutes signing off.